Chi, greetings, dear students. Today we are going to start our fourth lecture that is devoted to the, our course of System of Hidden Active Defense Technology. And today's task for us would be to know the true meanings of the fundamental notions. So this is the topic which is going to be consulted and given to us by our chief, by the general director of the Austrian Scientific Research, the United Society of Russian Science in Europe, Oleg Maltsev. So please pay your welcome and I'm giving you the word. Мы сегодня с вами продолжаем углубляться в фундаментальные понятия. Я хотел бы вам сначала объяснить, для чего мы это делаем. So today we are going to deepen our knowledge as for the fundamental notions. And first of all, I'd like to explain you why we are uh, following this very way of studies. First of all, it is necessary for us just to uh, let us understand each other equally. Во-вторых, вы должны понимать, что нигде вам не объясняют, что это такое, кроме как в этой академии. Moreover, it's a very important thing to be understood that uh, there is no place in the whole world where those fundamental notions are going to be explained for you in every single detail. Все люди употребляют слова и не понимают их значения. The problem is lying in the fact that everybody uses uh, these or those words in their language while they speak, but they do not know what they are talking about. They don't know the meaning of those words. And as we see the situation that no one can explain, no one is able of giving a decent explanation of this or that notion, so in this state of things, he tries to invent his own explanation. Yeah. Uh, or but your own invention is just the beginning, because it's not only one situation that might happen. The next one is connected with the fact uh, plenty of people use someone else's explanations, but actually those people ain't aware of that meaning of those words. And this is that very ground from which um, all delusions in this world appear. Nobody knows the decent explanation and they try to invent their own or try to find someone that has been already invented. Perhaps one of the most important problems that we might face is connected with uh, the English language and the language itself. Because uh, we know uh, that one word in the English language owes the diversity of meanings. I tend to explain that one word may have lots of meanings combined all together. And that's the problem for a decent understanding. So this is the main reason why, I mean, such a diversity of meanings, just of one word, this is the main reason why each person who speaks English or thinks in the English language has to actually think somehow himself, just to make his own idea of what is talked about. Это, ну, наверное, не имеет никакого значения, когда речь идет о том, сколько кто должен выпить за стойкой грамм алкоголя. Perhaps it's not uh, as important in such a situation when someone wants to have a drink, you know, it's not so important whether you want to have just one drink or two drinks, one hundred grams or one ounce or something like that. It's not so important in such situations. Uh, everything that you want to do in this situation is that you don't drink alcohol. If you don't drink alcohol, then you will 
ну, выпить вместо 50 грамм 100 или вместо, наоборот, вместо 150 грамм. То есть никакой проблемы в этом нет, можно заказать еще раз. So in this way, uh, uh, the biggest problem that you may just come into is that maybe you will drink just a little bit more or just a little bit less. Well, you know, for example, 50 except for 100. But that's not a problem because you can take another drink. That's it. Большие проблемы возникают тогда, когда речь идет о фундаментальных понятиях, которые нельзя двояко понимать. То есть их нужно понимать так, как положено. Иначе э, у нас начинаются проблемы с нашим профессионализмом. То есть мы начинаем делать что-то после этого, не понимая, о чем идет речь. But this is a small situation on the smallest level of mistake that might appear. But let's take another situation, a professional one, where we may face really great problems just due to this fact we do not know the fundamental meanings or we have we haven't the equal understanding of those fundamental meanings. And in this very case, uh, such person cannot be considered as a professional because um, he doesn't follow the stream, the main meaning. Давайте попробуем это ну, вот, преодолеть эту сложность да, для нас в понимании, потому что когда касается русского языка, каждое слово имеет отдельное значение, и ошибиться невозможно. А когда мы имеем дело с иностранным языком, любым, испанским, английским, французским, мы имеем с многочтением одного и того же слова. То есть нам доходить нужно по смыслу. И э, вот это нам и нужно сегодня преодолеть. Это главная задача нашего сегодняшнего занятия. Преодолеть языковой барьер, преодолеть языковой барьер и по одинаково понимать профессиональные термины. So, uh, during this very lecture, our main task would be to overcome that barrier in our mind. So, I'd like you just to understand and to pay your very significant attention to the fact that in lots of European languages such as French or uh, German or Spanish or English, we always face the same problem with a diversity of meanings of one single word. Whilst in Russian actually we do not have this problem because in Russian one Russian word has just one meaning. And that's it. And we don't try to uh, find something else. But Russian is Russian and your language is your language. But still we face this problem which is called the language barrier. And the main task of our today's lecture is to come, in, is to come up to equal understanding of all fundamental notions because that's the utmost idea for every professional in every world speaking any language. Okay. И поэтому первые два фундаментальных понятия, которые мы будем разбирать, это ум и разум. Я не знаю, как это сказать по-английски. Давайте назовем его термином ум и разум. То есть два названия, мы вот как-то, я не знаю, как это, вот, потому что это одно и то же может быть слово по-английски. Да, и поэтому как бы это разные вещи. Поэтому давайте мы э, вообще не будем употреблять э, слово ум и слово разум. Мы назовем, э, при, под, э, мы как бы э, причислим э, на, номера механизмам, с которыми будем иметь дело. И когда мы будем иметь дело с первым механизмом, мы будем подразумевать ум. А когда мы будем иметь дело со вторым механизмом, мы будем подразумевать разум. So, one more complicated notion for understanding is as follows. In Russian we have two different words, one word which you have in the English language. I'm talking about, let's say, mentality. But it's not the way of mentality. In Russian it could have... It couldn't be named just as one word. We have two words for that. But for preventing any misinterpretation, we're not going to follow any 
notions by creating some new no neologisms okay we are going to find another way to work on this problem we are going to look at the systems or setups you know like there are gears in machine or some kind of technique there are several gears so as for mentality there are as well plenty of gears but there are two the main there are two main gears as for mentality so we are just going to give a number to this or that gear so one would, would be the first gear the first setting whilst the second is going to be called the second setting because otherwise we won't be able to overcome that barrier let's just number it and count we're going to deal with the first system and with the first setting and with the second system and the second uh, setting whilst all together combined in your language both in spanish and in english it is called as mentality okay. Значит, когда мы будем говорить о разуме, то есть о втором механизме, да, мы будем подразумевать, то есть второй механизм у нас э, осмысляет задачу и задает вопросы. То есть он ищет, задает вопросы, осмысляет задачу и ставит задачу. Да? Вот так вот. Второй механизм у нас ищет вопросы. То есть осознает, что что-то не понимает, задает вопросы или ставит задачи. Понимаете, да? Это второй механизм. Окей. So, let's first of all talk about the second system. By the second system, the second mental system, we are going to understand such system which is dealing with those items. So this system makes a human, first of all, think of a task. So this setting helps us thinking. We are trying to find ideas, we are trying to think of, just to speculate, and so on and so forth. So we have some kind of task, or we have some kind of problem or situation, and we think of it due to usage of this very second system. This is the first item. Let's go on. The second, as the second item is telling us that due to this setting and on the basis of this setting, we are searching for the questions. So any human, any person searches in his life for these of those questions. And he's doing that due to this setting. Okay? And the third criteria by which this setting can be characterized with is dealing with setting the tasks you know sometimes in your life you're trying to set your own goal like your objective okay and you're setting your task on the basis of this system without this system any human just won't be able and won't have any opportunity to think of a task to search for a question or to set это, это вообще на самом деле это очень глубинное духовное понятие и на английском языке их объяснить очень 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 сложно почему я хочу чтобы на этот вопрос вы сами себе как бы ответили actually as for all these explanations as for all these notions first of all I'd like to emphasize the fact that all these notions are kind of deep spiritual level of perception notions okay so uh, the main probably I tend to think the main problem that is lying in the sphere of interpreting them and explaining them to you is that we have the different way of thinking in Russian and in the English languages And why do we have they? Due to which reason? This is the question that you are going to answer for yourselves, okay? That's your own task. But for us, to create the equal understanding, 
of what we are dealing with, this explanation would be the most proper. Второй механизм также обеспечивает участие такой части, как тело человека, в выполнении задач. So, let's talk about this setting, about this gear, okay? First of all, due to this gear, you use your body, as well as this. Это второй механизм, не первый. As well as, uh, the, yes, I'm sorry, this is the second, still the second gear. Due to this gear, you are using your body for this or that task implementation. You know, for some situation, just to make something done, you ought to use your body. But how to do that? And which system should you use to do that? This is the answer and this is the function which is dissolved due to this second setting. Он обеспечивает участие тела. То есть человек это не тело. Это запчасть. Тело запчасть человека. Одна из запчастей человека. Mm -hmm. okay. So, the next very thing for you to know till the very time of your life is that due to this system you can work with your body. You can implement some of the tasks with your body. But it doesn't mean that the human and his body are equal items, or that a human is just his body and that's it. No, that's not like that. Let's take the case at, as it stands. The body of a human is just a small part, it's just an element of a great system that might be called a human. And we should emphasize that because it's a very important thing because lots of people tend to think they're bodies. They are not just bodies. Body is a part of a human being, but not a human being itself. Как проверить, что человек не является телом? So let's check how to know and how to prove ourselves that we are not just bodies. Вам нужно проснуться утром. Желательно это сделать до, до завтра. First of all, you should wake up early in the morning. The better, the better idea would be to wake up before you take breakfast, okay? <laughs> and the very next thing, before you take your breakfast, you should go to the hospital. But not just to a usual hospital, you know, but right to that very place where all dead people and dead bodies lie. You know, there are separate uh, rooms in such hospitals where dead people lie. You should go there. И когда вы заходите туда, вы видите трупы. And when you come up there, all that you see around you are just dead bodies. И почему-то вы их называете трупами и не называете людьми. And you know what? One of the most significant things about that situation is that usually when you look at those bodies, somehow you want to give them the name of dead bodies, but not of the humans. Да, и раз вы их называете трупами и не называете людьми, вероятно, человеком вы считаете кого-то другого. So, let's take such conclusion. If you may call them dead bodies, but not humans, that might mean for you that dead bodies and humans are quite various notions, right? And human for you is not a dead body, right? Многие люди также считают, что они думают мозгом. There is one more delusion to be explained. Some of us, some people, tend to think that actually they think with their brains. So the brain does all the thinking work. That's another delusion to be talked about. 
just imagine again once again you're still in a special in a special stay in a special room where you are surrounded with dead bodies Попросите патологоанатома разрезать череп как бы у человека, посмотрите, мозг не думает. Then you may call a very good specialist. His name is an anatomist. Patologoanatomist. Actually, as for me, I don't like these people, but they are very good at cutting people, right? So you may call such person an anatomist and ask him, you know, he's a very kind person and he is a capable of cutting people's heads. Just by cutting someone's head, you will see what's inside that head and you will see the brain, of course. Mm -hmm. То есть он не думает, потому что это труп, это не человек. Но если бы мозг думал, он бы думал без человека. Why am I talking all about that stuff, right? Just uh, I want you to come up to the idea that even having chopped someone's head, even having cut it apart aside, and watching someone's brain, I mean the brain of the dead people that are lying in that special hospital, okay? You see that brain, but still, even if you are still stuck to the delusion that people use their brains for thinking, we might follow the question, why do all dead bodies who steal all their brains do not think of something? So the main conclusion is that dead people who still have the brains do not think. So maybe we do not think with a brain, do we? Так вот, вам, ну как бы, надо понимать это именно так. И никак иначе, если хотите чему-то научиться. So in case you're going to learn something new, just in case you really want to become a pro, to know just the case as it is. First of all, you should work over those delusions and you should know how to overcome them. That's why we are talking about all those situations, okay? And only after overcoming these problems, you might be able to go on, go further. That's a very serious point. Второе заблуждение, которое вам относительно своего тела, э, так сказать, надо понимать, прояснить для себя. So, let's clear up our minds according to the second delusion, which many people are in. Вы думаете, что вы стоите на ногах? One more interesting delusion and striking one actually is that lots of us are quite confident in their minds that they are standing on their feet they are standing due to their leg work but that's not the truth we are not standing вы как бы на нитках висите в воздухе я не знаю это как по-английски объяснить как кукла. Ваше тело как кукла висит в воздухе и поставленная она этими нитками ровно так на пол, чтобы было прочное сцепление с полом. The thing I'm going to explain for you right now, I guess, is one of the most striking that you have ever heard of. You are not standing on your feet, so the feet is not the basis that is uh, holding your structure tough, okay? You're just like a puppet, like a doll in the theater. Just remind yourself of children theaters, you know? There are such dolls who are hang, who hang due to special ropes. You know, there are people who have ropes on their hands, on their fingers, and due to these ropes, they move the dolls, the puppets. 
and then we are watching the spectacular performance, right? So uh, this is the very best situation for you to explain the way and the main principle due to which you are standing. Just imagine like all around your body you are having such ropes and you are being pulled by these ropes. They are invisible and they are somehow quite high. That's not the point. You are hanging due to these ropes in such a way and in su to such a degree just that you are touching the floor with the end of your body which might be your feet. So you are hanging in the air and you are being pulled by these ropes but you are not standing on your feet. That is one more important point for you to be thought of and to be overcome with. Хочу, чтобы вы знали, что с научной точки зрения мое объяснение совершенно неверное, с правильной точки зрения оно неверное. Я не знаю, как по-другому это объяснить английской аудитории, чтобы это себе могли представить. And first of all, of course, uh, my emphatic explanation once again would concern such point that from, of course, from scientific point of view, especially from modern, orthodox, contemporary scientific point of view, all these explanations, as for the ropes, uh, as for your body, how it works, it's not maybe correct, right? As for that point of view. But to uh, allow you to understand properly how the system altogether combined works, we are giving for you such explanations just to make up with you together a decent image, an equal image for both sides, for us and for you, to understand each other. То есть, и поэтому мы будем потихоньку как бы углубляться в эти понятия, пытаясь англоязычной аудитории объяснить, как на самом деле обстоят дела с этими механизмами. So from now on we are going, from now on we are going to deepen our knowledge according to the initial system of how the system actually works, of not how you are told it works due to no, just mm, the way the case as it stands, right? And in such a way, on the basis of those examples and on the basis of those explanations, we are going to make a picture for you, for our foreigners, for our foreign students, just to make you understand which delusions you should just come off and which delusions are going to be split up by those explanations. And from some point of view, of course, they might be too detailed and maybe too weird from the first sight. But on the other hand, if you want to know how the system works, you should work hard and to be disciplined and try to do that. Мы сейчас поговорим о первом механизме, вот об этом первом механизме, и мы будем считать первым механизмом, это тот механизм, который позволяет нам справляться с задачами, то есть достигать результатов. Механизм внедрения, то есть достижения результата, он, как бы этот механизм, методом, он ищет решение, ищет решение, создает решение, создает решение. Создает решение, а потом их выполняет, превращает их в механизм, то есть как бы человек использует этот механизм, реализует задачу. То есть это, ну, как это объяснить по-английски? Да, я просто говорю, то есть человек как бы пользуясь этим механизмом, получает результат. Вот я так сказал. Окей. Okay. Let's go on. A very complicated thing, but still it can be done. Let's go. So, let's 
talk about the first system, the first setting. By the first setting, we are going to mean such mentality setting due to which every human and every person is able to implement all tasks in his life. You know, just to receive something, you should use something. And this is that very something according to which you receive your results. So, in order to achieve any goal or any result, in order to fulfill your dream, to make up your object, and so on and so forth, you should use, and you are actually using, this kind of system. So, once again, this system helps you to implement the task, to achieve your result, just because in any single situation, and always, it provides you a special system for that very situation. You know, all situations are different and various. And as we always face the alternatives, we always have to use something new or something else. That's why we need to be provided with a special system for this task. And on the basis of this system, we are provided by such setting, and due to that setting, we receive the result, or we implement the task. And then the result is achieved, the task is implemented, and you get what you want. And all due to this setting. Есть и третий механизм. Под третий механизм мы будем понимать с вами такую вещь, как способность человека работать с геометрией. So. We are going to talk about the next class or settings. As for the next class of settings, let's call it the third system, right? Due to this very system, we are going to work with geometrical items. So this is that very class of systems or gears, right? Due to which we are capable of working with geometrical items. We won't be able to create something in geometry without this system. And this system is quite important for us to be known of. То есть, этот механизм, способность работать с геометрией, да, и как бы сознательно, в здравом уме, я не знаю, с трезвой памяти, я даже не знаю, как это объяснить. Этот механизм позволяет осознанно добиваться результата. Mm -hmm. это, то, есть, не, то есть он позволяет использовать другие уровни решения задачи, которые стоят выше, чем автоматизмы как бы, тела. So, он называется сознанием. Right, it's consciousness. Да, okay. да. Вот как-то вот так я издаю. As for this setting, for you in the English language, the closest word as for its meaning is consciousness. The first meaning of this word, consciousness, in the name of the third mechanism. Why? Because due to this setting, due to this work with geometrical items, we are capable of choosing, choosing this or that level of task implementation. Remember, there are several levels. For example, you may use your body, you may use your automatic cybernetic human body system, but that is, that is getting done by you unconsciously, just occasionally, somehow. But there are some tasks in our life, especially in the business security provision, when you just cannot use something unconsciously. It's just the price is too high, you know. You have to be conscious and you have to know what should be used by you. And due to this setting, you're able of choosing 
of consciousness choosing what kind of instruments should be used and applied. То есть, и что вам нужно здесь запомнить для вашей работы? Что сначала строится геометрия, то есть сначала выполняется геометрическая функция, после этого происходит реализация. So, the main principle you must get aware of, I'm emphatic, you must, is that first of all, when you're implementing your task, you're working with two sides. The first side is connected with this setting, because first of all, you work with geometry. You use this system and create some kind of geometrical item. This is done by you at the first. And only after geometry creation, you receive the realization or the result itself. So, first comes the geometry, and only after this part of work is done and performed by you, the realization or the result might get received. То есть, и при определенном уровне подготовки, выстроившуюся геометрию до действия, вы можете увидеть не вот этими физическими глазами, а другими видами зрения, да, и отреагировать раньше, Чем произойдет, произойдет реализация? Вот для чего нам нужно знание этого механизма. Mm -hmm. So, Дой. please, be very attentive. First of all, I need to explain this, okay? Before you demonstrate, мне нужно объяснить. Не, я не буду сейчас ничего показывать. Я сейчас, ты будешь, подожди секундочку, не объясняй, я сейчас покажу сейчас, как бы на демонстрацию и после этого ты станешь объяснять. Скажи в камеру это. So the first principle that should get understood by you is that, is that you create the geometry and then the realization comes. And for every human the situation in the cell is the same. Any human first of all works with the geometry. He creates the geometry of an action and only after the geometry is created the action itself happens. So we are going to make the demonstration of that. So we are looking for some kind of scarf just to tighten the eyes. Why we are going to do that? The main idea is that this geometry is, can be seen with your spiritual eyesight. Not with your physical eyesight, but with another level of eyesight. You do not watch with your eyes. So as far as you may see, his eyes are tightened up with a scarf, quite tough. He is not looking with his physical eyes. Dmitry сейчас по собственному разумению, но в тот момент, когда он захочет подымет пистолет в относ... относительно меня, и вы увидите мою реакцию. So right now, physically, he is not aware of what Dmitry is going to do. I mean, his assistant, right? Right now, the task of Dmitry is to aim his pistol, his gun, against Oleg. But they do not know when he is going to do that. So please watch their reaction. What might happen? At some moment, he's going to raise up his gun. The target is lost, you see? Consciously, just to stretch it against the target. 
but as for the reaction, the target is lost. Why? Ты же понимаешь, что прогнозируемая следующая точка опоры не охуел. So the main idea is that they are trying to manipulate each other, but still it doesn't work. Вот вы видите, да, то есть как бы геометрия видна другими глазами. So according to this demonstration, it's quite obvious that the geometrical state of things is might be seen before this state of things actually comes, and it is seen with your spiritual eyesight. То есть вы когда прикладываетесь, сначала выстраивается геометрия, потом по ней это позволяет вам приложиться, позволяет вам приложиться. И только после этого происходит выстрел. So how the setting all together works? The explanation is as follows: first, when you aim your gun, when you stretch it against your target, you create a geometrical way of making that shooting. And only after that, when the geometry is ready, the shooting is getting done, and the action is perceived by us here on physics. So first come the geometry, which is not visible with our physical eyes, and only then the action itself takes place. That's it. То есть нам, то есть я сразу же ну показал практическое применение, то есть как бы вы должны понять то, что мы работали на расстоянии, ну, например, полтора метра, да, это не имеет никакого значения. То есть это могло быть 2 километра, 10 километров, 30, 50, хоть территория всего земного шара. То есть строящаяся геометрия перед реализацией видна э, духовными глазами, не этими, не физическими. Независимо от того, какое расстояние. То есть когда должна произойти какая-то реализация, она видна вот этими вот глазами. Потом мы будем называть вот этим сознанием, подожди, ты будешь сейчас объяснять своими словами, не от меня останавливать. Я закончу, как бы, а ты это объяснишь все за. Поэтому я одно и то же, Ира, говорю, э, э, с трех, с четырех, с пяти ракурсов, а ты уже сама, как переводчик, должна думать, как это объяснить, как меня останавливать. Okay. Да, то есть, как бы, ну, э, вот, э, вот эти две функции сознания, способность работать с геометрией, то есть выстраивать эту геометрию, и управляться с геометрией, то есть изменять геометрию. Mm -hmm. То есть, по сути своей, способность создавать образы, создавать создавать образы и внедрять эту геометрию, ну то есть как бы э, воплощаться в ней, ну, то есть как бы выполнять действия дости... ну, по достижению результата. Вот теперь как бы я сказал для русскоязычной аудитории все, что им нужно было услышать, а ты для англоязычной аудитории доведи это так, э, ну чтобы они поняли о чем идет речь. Но насколько это на английском языке вообще возможно? Okay, so the explanation was quite long, and that was created for our Russian students. So in English right now I'm going to explain just the way it just could be explained in English. So, <clears throat> first of all, according to this principle, you should understand that this geometry is being built at first. First comes the geometry which might be percepted by your spiritual eyesight level. There are several of them. And of, only after the geometry is being created by you or by any other human, the action is fulfilled due to this geometry. And one more important thing is that it doesn't really matter what the distance is or how the long the distance is. As for the demonstration, the distance was approximately two meters long, right? Between two people standing here in this room. But either two meters or five kilometers, all the two hemispheres of the globe, 
far from, right? It doesn't matter at all. The principle works without dependence on this or that territory or distance length. Because the principle is not working according to the physical rules. It works due to another rules and principles we are trying to study right now. So, the principle works as follows. We are talking about any human's capability of geometry creation. And when you see the geometry itself before the action of that geometry is being created, you may manage to operate with it, not with the action like the shooting or heating or something like that, just with the geometry that was thought by someone. And you may stand just on the territory of another country, you may stand in two meters far distance or five kilometers distance, the principle still will be the same. Then, the next very thing you have to understand is that all these settings, they work together gradually. But the first one is the geometry. Geometry is being created by a person. Then he creates, he puts it like in front of him. Just imagine, it's an image. It's an explanation to break up your delusion and create an image of how it works. You put the geometry like of shooting, of something doing or acting, and then you're getting mentally stuck into it. Because you are using this mental setting. And by knowing how to use that, and by knowing what exactly you are going to do, you are making it. And only after that, when you created the geometry, and when you just came into that geometry to make it being created in physics, the realization comes and takes place. So, once again, there are you, your geometry that has been created by you, your movement across that geometry, and the action of the geometry, which is called the realization. So this is how it works, and we are talking about the person's very important capability of creating images. So all that was explained for you to let you know how the image creation principle or work is done by any human. And by certain level of preparation, by certain level of preparation, any person is capable of working with images but not with physical actions. Physical actions are quite low things for people with a low level of preparation. People of higher level of preparation work with images. And of course, right now it's quite complicated for you to understand that that's just possible at all. But it is. And we're going to study as well how to do that. And the first very step for approaching that goal is to understand completely this very principle I'm trying to give you an explanation of. Теперь каждый из этих механизмов можно было бы нарисовать на доске, ну схематично. Меня всегда спрашивают, так ли они устроены. Вам не надо знать, так они устроены или не так они устроены. Вам нужно понимать одно, помогает это вам реализовывать задачи или не помогает. Потому что если бы это были русские, я вам быстро на пальцах объяснил, на, на практических примерах. Люди с англоязычной Я им буду объяснять, ну как бы, это сказать, примитивно, для того, чтобы у них был просто механизм, который они могли эксплуатировать и получать результат. So, 
about those settings, talking about those settings, of course it is quite possible to make a sketch of them, I mean a drawing, to put a pattern of a scheme of how it works, of which part this system consists of, how of which elements, how they look like a whole pattern, a whole picture. And Mr. Marx, of course, is aware of the fact how they work. And of course, he is able of making such sketch. And he always does that. But as for practice, he is always being asked as well. As for the truth of his sketching, I mean, whether this system is drawn by him correctly or not. So this is the question which is faced by him quite often. That's why, to give you an explanation, we're not going to stick too much to that point. Because for you, for our dear foreign students, it's not as important of, of how it works, whether it works like that or it doesn't work like that. For you, the most important answer would be the one which helps you to understand whether that gear or system helps you to achieve the results you want or it doesn't help you to achieve the result you want. In case it helps, in case you are aware of how you can use and apply this system, you will be quite confident and feel strong enough of the fact you may receive the results you want to and receive the realization of your action. Of course, for Russian students, we sometimes give another explanation because, you know, we are different, we look different, we have different standards of living and so on and so forth. But even still, we are a little bit different, or a bit different. We have created a special system for you to explain how it works. So first question which you may face and ask yourself, whether it helps me to achieve the result, whether I can apply it in my life, or I cannot receive the result due to the system, and I cannot apply it. So, first of all, let's work over how the second setting works like. We are going to draw the setting of the second gear. Итак, механизм номер два устроен и соединяется с пяти частей. То есть главой этого механизма является человек, то есть как духовное существо, как часть Бога. Но назовем его математическим, математической единицей, управляющий индивид. У и. Ну, я не знаю, как по-английски будет, но это введем какой-то. Можете, Ирина Игоревна, произвольно ввести свое собственное понятие вот этого духа, э, как части Бога, э, чтобы всем было понятно, что когда мы будем говорить э, вот это слово, или, и чтобы я его знал, mm -hmm. чтобы мы знали, что мы это подразумеваем. So, talking about the second system, uh, we mean, first of all, that all together it gets combined by five elements. Okay, so let's start with the first element. By the first element, actually, we mean the person himself. But not like the 
human system on the whole, but that core component of the human system that is being given him by God, I mean the spiritual part of the system. And in order to bring it a decent notion, and a notion that might be understood by us, we are going to create a certain even mathematical notion and conception. Let's call it an operating individuum, right? Operating individuum is that core component of a human that actually is his spiritual part. And this is his main part. And the first element of the second system that makes up the mentality system. Да, дальше идет ролевой барабан. То есть это, представьте, возьмите револьверный барабан из вось, с восьми патронами, да? Вот он будет выглядеть так. Это э, сводный объем эстафетных ролей, так называемый, как термин. Придумайте термин. То есть э, собирательный образ эстафетных ролей. So, Револьвера? Just... А где же я тебя возьму? In order to explain, no, no, it, okay, I'll explain it. In order to explain how the second part and the second element looks like and works like, we are going to take an item you're already aware of because you're dealing with it as you're working in the sphere of security and personal safety. Let's take a pistol or a gun which has as a sport, a special drum. You know, a drum where you put the patterns inside. And this drum is being rotating by you, and by rotation you receive some empty spaces where you put the pattern, just to prevent, to make the shooting, okay? So just imagine, take an image of that drum, and try to pretend like that drum of a gun has eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Has eight empty spaces for patterns to go inside. So the second element of this gear looks like that. And the name of it is a roll drum. So here we have such Roll drum. You know, in his life, any human is playing various roles. And here, in this drum, we have the total amount of unconscious roles any person uses. So let's call it a roll drum, which consists of eight unconscious rules that are being used by any human in any situation throughout all his life. This is the second part and the second element. Следующим моим элементом является реактивно-инцидентное хранилище. То есть, некое хранилище, в котором скоплен весь негативный прошлый опыт. Ну, то есть, как бы, там, где все ваши неудачи хранятся. Okay, let's move on and come up to the third element. As for the third element, we call it the reactive incident storage. You see, I've created an abbreviation, but it's quite clear, because it's a reactive Incident storage. I would like to emphasize the last word in this abbreviation, I mean the storage, because actually this is the real storage. The storage, just like a place in the system where all your previous negative experience lies at. So you have a special place in your mind 
where all your experience should be put in. And this is right, this place, which we are talking about right now, where you hold your whole experience that you get throughout all your life, since childhood till this very moment. Дальше мы имеем примыкающее к этому тело. Ну, то есть внизу вот здесь будет тело, да? Тело, тело. So, тело as, человека. As for the next part, let's talk about exactly. the body. Of course, any human has a body, right? And this element is just stuck toughly to the roll drum and to the reactive incident storage. И к ним пятым элементом примыкает э, функция. Одна оценочная, то есть это блок делится на две части. Одна оценочная функция, вторая оправдательная функция. So, as for the fifth element that all together create the whole system, this element is playing two functions. One function is bringing you up to plain values. So, you know, throughout your life, you're always asking yourself whether it is worth of doing it or it is not. So, you are trying to calculate the value, whether you should do that or you should not. Is it valuable at all? Is it enough virtue? And so on and so forth. So, this is the first function that is being created. Whilst the second function is the function that makes you feel you're always right. So the function that cares for your rights is the second one. Because sometimes, even if you are not right in this or that case, you are still trying to think of all variants which may pretend you are right. You're just thinking of them, like new ideas. And when you're thinking about your rightness, and when you're thinking about the worldliness, all together you're using those two functions, which are the part of this system. I mean the system, the mental mind system number two. All together it looks like this, consisting of five elements. Так устроено вот это устройство номер два, механизм номер два. В чем проблема этого механизма? Взаимодействие в этом механизме происходит следующим способом. У большинства людей. So, this is the way the second system works like. This is the way the second system looks like and following this explanation we are going to discuss the main problem it causes for any person. First of all we should be aware of the fact that this system is always being used by any person. Usually that's done unconsciously. Дело в том, что взаимодействие происходит следующим способом. То есть вы должны как бы, вспомнить, что механические конструкции, они, в общем-то, работают по определенным принципам. First of all, you should come up to the idea that all mechanical structures work on the basis of certain principles. И поэтому, поэтому, чтобы произвести некую работу с точки зрения механики, необходима опора, ну, точка опоры, рычаг и сила, которая использует рычаг. 
So the principle is as follows. First of all, you need the pivot, like a dot, a pivot, okay? Then you need a shoulder that is put on the pivot. And you need some kind of effort or power that you apply for the shoulder that is stuck on the pivot. I mean, the principle works on the basis of combination of three elements, like a pivot, a shoulder, and an effort. So the majority of people produce the results like we are going to see right now. Они в качестве опоры используют прошлый опыт, то есть неудачи прошлого. So as the pivot, they use their incidents that are taken from their past experience. All misfortunes, everything negative lies there in the reactive incident storage. And as the pivot, they use this or that experience incident. В качестве рычага они используют оправдание. As a shoulder, the вот это рычаг оправдания. The function of the rightness is used, so you see all together these two pivots combined create a shoulder. Okay. И в качестве силы роль эстафетную автоматическую, то есть которая работает сама как бы по себе. And as an effort, as an effort, an unconscious role is used. So remember here in the role drum, the roles that are played unconsciously and automatically by all people are used. So as an effort, a human uses quite unconsciously this role. Once again, an incident of your past negative experience is a pivot. The functions of whether you're right or not makes a shoulder. And as an effort, a row is taken by you. So let's just take a demonstration of it according to the example to make it clear. So here we have the fist. So when you see you might receive a strike with a fist into your head, you are just of course you are trying to somehow make it go away. You don't want to receive a strike in your face. Even though you haven't any skills that you got just between that very situation, still you want to accept the strike. And actually, as for the strike exceptions and as for this behavior, all idiots, all crazy people do that. So the main problem is in the fact that when the strikes come up to your face, when the strikes come up to your chin, first of all, of course, you want to run away. But by running away, you forget about the main idea that you may receive the strike from his other hand. And you do not have enough time or you even do not think of that you should run away from the second strike. And then the third might go on, and the fourth, and so on and so forth. So the running away from the strikes, it may come as a conclusion, is your path to misfortune. You will be struck by that strike, and you'll receive no result, and you'll receive a misfortune by trying to run away from a strike. Еще удар. То есть я не убегаю от него, не убегаю от него, не смещаюсь никуда, да? So right now, as far as you may see, he's not trying to run away somehow or somewhere. He's not running away, but he's working with his strike. А двигаюсь на него, на его кулак. He's not running away, but he is being pushed in front of. He's going 
forward. Что кажется противоречит всем законам здравого смысла. And of course, according to the usual rules, it's just quite contradictory position, you know. You receive a strike and you're moving forward towards a strike. That's contradictory in your mind, but just in your mind. При всем при этом я его еще не касаюсь. Because it's just the beginning that he's moving forward. The next very thing to be, sh uh, to be told of is that he's not touching that strike. The strike just slips away somehow, and that's the point. So, please, may you have watched what's going on? You see the demonstration, right? Yeah. Try to hit him. Once again, he's moving forward towards the strike, and the strike just slips away somehow. So this is the way it works. То есть я иду на кулак. So you see, he's not moving away. He's walking forward towards the fist and towards the strike that fist might create. Let's take a marker. And now you see the work with a marker. Even with a marker in your hand, you can just make the strike slip away. That's what happens. As for the point of view of science or mind, these actions are just senseless, but still they work somehow. Мои действия решены здравого смысла. Я иду на него, кулак, обратите внимание, здесь, и вот он висит, с танга замкнулась, он висит в воздухе. So you see, the actions are quite contradictory and senseless, because he is not trying to run away from the strike, he's moving forward, he's doing something, but the strikes all slip away, and of course, even though they're senseless, they're resultative. То есть, почему так получается? So let's talk about... Uh, how and why this works and this all happens. Simply due to the fact he's aware of what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. He's doing that consciously. Uh, As he is aware of what he's doing, he's operating it, he's managing it. No, uh, всегда лежат за границами общепринятого. But the main problem and the main idea is based on the fact that all correct decisions, all proper decisions, always lie beyond the merits of something that you may have idea of. Just quite contradictory, but still. А как действую я? А я действую вот так. So, let's watch the way he works and he creates those demonstrations. Let's work out the principle of it. То есть вот это будет первый треугольник номер один. И он путь к поражению. So, let's watch, look at the first triangle that creates misfortunes. А это путь к победе. Whilst this is the second triangle that is used by Mr. Maltzen, and this second triangle, this principle, is your way to the victory, okay? The principles vary. То есть, ну, обратите внимание, но вот эта штука красная, да, вот эта роль, она не входит в, в, в механизм номер два. But the main idea about all that stuff is that here in this triangle, you see, we have a row, a special outstanding row that really is outstanding because it stands out of the whole system and out of the whole setting. And that's really strange and weird on the one hand and exciting from the other. То есть, и это часть механизма номер один. So, where does this row as an element come from? 
This role as an element is taken from the first gear, from the first very system. Let's remind ourselves of the first system we were already speaking about. It comes out of that very system. Remember, on the previous board we have three systems. We were talking about the second system, which is sketched here. And right now we are coming up to the first system. And first of all, we face this row. Пока достаточно, мы пока больше не будем изучать механизм номер два, мы его будем углублять его понимание в процессе обучения в академии. На всем протяжении процесса обучения в академии мы будем иметь дело с этими механизмами, каждый из них будем все больше, больше, больше разбирать и понимать. So as for now, by this time, as for the structure of the second gear of the second system, I guess that's enough. The main principles are shown, and for your understanding, for the beginning, for the basis, this is going to be the final sketch and final part, but that's not the end. And please do not worry, because even if it is not the end, we're going to speculate over this system once again and deepen our knowledge according to it further on by the process of our studies, I mean, during the period of the whole year. We're going to talk about this setting once again and once again, and we're going to research it gradually. Uh, so right now let's talk about what this pattern, what this drawing teaches us of. Если вы и дальше будете использовать свой прошлый опыт, вы будете постоянно проигрывать. The main conclusion you should come up to is that if you are going to continue to apply your previous experience taken from the past, still you are going to receive just the misfortunes. Mary? Once again, by using your experience, your previous past misfortunes, once again and once again and once again, still you're going to receive your misfortunes, your misfortunes, once again, once again and once again. So this is how it works. То есть, если вы намереваетесь, слушая меня, дальше продолжать делать то, что вы делали, вы ничему не научитесь, будете и все, что вы будете делать и далее на базе то есть поражений своих предыдущих, то есть это приведет вас, это приведет вас к следующим поражениям. So still, if you have an intention to continue on doing and acting as you always were acting, just like as you're just accustomed to, Still, you are going to receive just the misfortunes, and you are not going to create any level up to raise yourself, to go higher, to become better, stronger, and so on and so forth. Why? Simply because by the usage and applying of the misfortune, only misfortune may appear as a result. So, please, it's your choice whether you are going to listen to recommendation of our chief consultant, I mean, Mr. Mindset, or you are not going to do that. But the choice is right now is shown up on the blackboard. If you do what you are pretending on and what you like doing and what you are accustomed to doing, you are going to receive this item. But there is a choice. You uh, can tell me Олег, я столько лет учился, я столько лет приобретал опыт, я столько лет приобретал навыки, куда мне это все девать? So, according to this striking idea and concept, you may ask yourself or ask even us uh, with such a question, like Олег or someone else. So, if your words are true, so what am I pretending to do? What what should I do then? with my experience and with my skills, because I was working so hard trying to get them. I was working for maybe, for maybe all my life. So what am I supposed to do right now with my whole experience? And that is the question. 
мой учитель, мой наставник говорил, что у людей есть некие физиологические потребности. Okay, let's move on. As for this idea, the master of Alec Mindset used to say that every human, every person has his own physiological necessities, his own needs, according to his body. Everybody has them. You're aware of that fact. Okay. Uh, он говорит, что их несколько у человека, да? Вам нужно приобрести дополнительно еще одну. He used to say and he used to claim that every person has some of them, just several of them, of those physiological necessities. And this is the point you are taking right now. The next point for you would be to have one more, one optional necessity. So let's talk about it. Утром, когда вы посещаете туалет. So in the morning, when you are going to the lavatory, or we see. Помимо всего, что вы делаете. Apart from everything you are doing, I mean all psychological effects you are doing there in the toilet. Вам нужно одновременно еще освобождаться от прошлого опыта. One more idea you should just make slip away is to make your negative experience move away from you. Just clear up your negative experience apart from using lavatory, apart from washing yourself or doing what you are doing every morning, you see? Try to get one more optional necessity that is going to be done by you every single morning. Пока вы полностью от него не освободитесь не от, и не откажетесь. Мало okay. освободиться, надо еще и отказаться от него. We are talking about clearing up your previous negative experience. And by telling you to clear up that negative experience, we do not only mean that you should wash or wipe it completely, you should also reduce this experience up to the minimum, up to the zero, to make it the, the whole storage actually to go away, like you never have it at all. Mm -hmm. uh, до тех пор, пока вы полностью от него не освободитесь, не откажетесь, и больше никогда его не надо использовать. And you should do that every morning until that very time when you feel that it's just all gone away, it's slept away, and you do not have any experience. And one more thing about it, you just deny yourself to use that very experience. You're not going to use it at all. There is no point for you to use it at all. And this is that very moment where the turning begins. Вы пришли в академию для того, чтобы побеждать научиться безапелляционно. So, as far as we all may judge, the main idea why you just came up to the academy is to learn how to win in any single situation with no appeal to your victory. You should know how to do that. That's why you came here for. If you will do what you did before, then you will be like that in the beginning of the academy. And the main idea to be discussed right now is that if you are going to continue acting like you are a custom of, like your experience is telling you to act, you are not going to raise up, you are not going to improve your skills, but you're going to stay just on that very level with which you entered the academy. То есть, вам нужно хорошенько подумать в сегодняшнюю ночь, как приобрести еще одну физиологическую потребность. Вот и завтра утром начинать вот это проделывать все. Потому что 
э, если вы думаете, что вы сможете перестроиться, как бы приспособить свой прошлый опыт к этому, то у вас, вы, вас постигнет жуткое разочарование. А фундаментальное знание и ваше поражение несовместимы. So, as for the upcoming night, the main task for you would be to speculate over what was explained here up to this very moment to you. Because in case you still wish you could use your experience from time to time, or you're somehow being offended by that, and you, and you think that for this behavior you need some time, and you will be able of adopting your previous experience to that knowledge that we are going to give you right now during the process of studies. We tend to think for you, it is quite necessary to know right now, that a, that situation ain't going to give you any results. Simply because your previous misfortunes and your previous negative experience doesn't come up to the initial knowledge of task implementation because altogether these things are not to be combined they just not work together like misfortunes and previous experience and the initial knowledge that's it that's what you should think of <coughs> И моих объяснений в силу вашей ну, прошлой жизни, от моих этих объяснений у вас уже кипят мозги. Поэтому я считаю, на сегодня достаточно. На сегодня достаточно. Mm -hmm. да. Усвойте вот это. А завтра мы с вами продолжим опять исследование этих механизмов. Mm -hmm. Дальше. До тех пор, пока у нас не, появля... не появится первое понимание этого этих механизмов и взаимодействие этих механизмов между как бы собой, пока вы это не поймете. Okay, so once again, we know and of course we are aware of the point that one that you may face that maybe my explanations and my interpretations and uh, the demonstrations and explanations coming from the side of Mr. Malsop, all together combined, this lecture is maybe not enough for you to make all your delusions, make all your previous perceptions and persuasions just simply go away. So please, as for the upcoming night, try to think of what we are talking about right now. Try to think of how every morning you could just make your previous experience go away somehow far and just to make it just of no return. No. Because these fundamental notions are totally serious for understanding the real and absolute state of things. And only by knowing how the system works we are going to receive bad results and we are going to upgrade our skills. But just in this way. That's why we guess you really need some time. And as for this lecture, this information would be enough of you for today. But uh, as for the previous lecture, we are going to research these systems and to deepen our knowledge according to this very topic. So once again, please do make up your mind about what you're using, about all your misfortunes, about all your previous experience, about whether you should do that or you should do not. And even still, though, right now your mind is boiling, try to think why this happens. And maybe it's not so worth all that, I mean, your previous experience. That's it. Сегодня достаточно. Спасибо вам большое за внимание. До свидания. So as for today, that's enough. Thank you for your kind attention and goodbye.